Ferrari, Lamborghini, Porsche. These three manufacturers together monopolized the supercar fandom at a time when supercars were still very much an emerging aspect of automotive culture. Then the 1990s arrived, and the rest of the world seemed to have had enough of the status quo, and as such, revolutionaries and determined usurpers would follow. The effort to bring down the establishment appeared to be a concerted effort, as manufacturers from Asia, the US, and the rest of Europe looked to shake up the supercar space simultaneously. There were certainly different approaches to this goal, for example, with the Honda pioneering the everyday supercar movement, with its NSX producing a high-performance supercar which was also reliable, comfortable and refined a combination of characteristics simply unheard of at the time. Using the aforementioned as a template, others such as McLaren with its F1 would then take that philosophy to the next level. An American tale. Then we have Vector Aeromotive Corporation, who added their relatively lesser-known American flavor to this mix. Founded by industry veteran Gerald Wiegert in Wilmington, California, this company, through the production of its Vector W8 Twin Turbo, would make its entrance into the automotive establishment with a manner which would be fittingly described as shock and awe. This was probably the only tactic that Wiegert could employ, knowing very well that he could not rely on brand heritage or prestige to make a statement. The idea is to build a reputation, not ride on one said Wiegert, acutely conscientious as to what this journey would entail. This message resonated enough to garner some enthusiasm within the right circles and more importantly some investors, so the company was able to raise more than $13 million USD of capital and expand their operations into a 35,000 square foot facility. A, a leap of faith. Initially dubbed the W2 in its prototype stage, the W8 twin turbo would eventually go on to become a 6.0L mid-engined rear-wheel drive V8 supercar with 625 horsepower and an extroverted chassis exterior composed of carbon fiber, Kevlar, and aerospace-grade materials. Without question, Wegard and Vector Aeromotive Corporation abstracted the idea of a supercar further taking it to outer space with certain on-paper specifications that wouldn't feel out of place in a dialogue about the supercars or even hypercars of today. The Vector W8 Twin Turbo in many respects was ahead of its time, however, due to the company's financial troubles and eventual dissolution. The car ultimately fell behind the perpetually shifting curve. In the end, there were only 17 customer cars built plus two prototypes before production was eventually ceased. Today, the W8 Twin Turbo has a small but formidable cult following of whom the nostalgia is not lost on. It is considered a classic unicorn car which is on the radar of many private collectors. Examples come up for sale every now and then and are able to fetch huge money from $200,000 USD for restoration projects to as much as $1 million USD for mint examples. Despite things not really taking off for Vector Aeromotive Corporation, Wegard had still achieved his goal of shaking up the automotive industry by producing a supercar like no other before it. Some would even argue that the Vector W8 Twin Turbo has forged a distinguishable legacy, putting the U.S. on the map as a serious supercar power by setting the stage for the production of future supercars with a made-in-America distinction, such as the Ford GT and Celine S7. The Vector W8 Twin Turbo had an engine which not only set the precedence of what the car itself was all about, but also how future engines would be perceived particularly in the United States. The sheer abundance of power that the mid-mounted unit produced made for remarkable specs on paper, though its real-world performance in some cases is at best debatable. Specifications Engine type size 6.0L twin turbo V8 Horsepower 625 HP at 5,700 RPM Torque 649 LBFT at 4,900 RPM 060 mph 4.2 seconds, quarter mile 12 seconds at 124 mph. Top speed estimated 218 mph. 
The engine is a 6.0L twin turbocharged V8, which produces an advertised 625 horsepower at 5,700 RPM and 649 lbft of torque at 4,900 RPM, operating with 8 pounds of boost. Mounted transversely in the engine bay, the aluminum block and head, fuel injected power plant, is based on a 5.7L Chevrolet engine which had been strokered and then provided with forced induction. Boost pressure through the Garrett turbochargers can be adjusted by the driver up to a maximum of 14 PSI, with Vector Aeromotive Corporation claiming that this would allow the engine to output an astronomical 1,200 horsepower. Mated to the engine is a three-speed automatic transmission sourced from the Oldsmobile Parts catalog, which is appropriately fortified to withstand the demands of its new taskmaster and then fitted to a Gleason Torsen differential. All of these factors contributed to highly impressive performance figures at the time, even by today's standards. The rear-wheel-driven Vector W8 twin-turbo was capable of achieving 0 to 60 mph in 4.2 seconds and could complete the 1 4th mile sprint in 12 seconds at 124 mph. By comparison, this meant that it was faster than a Ferrari F40. Bugatti EB110 GT and Jaguar XJ220, each of which held the top speed records at one point in these metrics. It is interesting to note, however, that a top speed test was not officially conducted by Vector Aeromotive Corporation nor any third-party test drivers. Instead, a theoretical top speed was provided 218 mph to be exact by making calculations based on the three speeds gear ratios and the engine's maximum RPM. No expenses were spared by Wiegert and Co. to ensure that the engine would be a talking point in the automotive industry. To achieve his vision of creating a supercar which would unbalance the oligarchy, Wiegert knew that the W8 twin turbo would have to be more than just brawn. Therefore, the suspension was also intricately assembled with a state-of-the-art approach, resulting in an amalgamation of parts which would give the car the dexterity and poise it needed to complement its power. Over the front wheels, W8 Twin Turbo is equipped with a double wishbone independent suspension with adjustable Kony shocks, concentric springs and an anti-roll bar. In the rear, a De Dion rear axle with diagonal trailing links, adjustable Kony shocks, concentric springs, and an adjustable anti-roll bar complete the package. W8 Twin Turbo is fitted with a braking setup which matches 13-inch vented rotors to aluminum four-pot Alcon calipers in both the front and rear. Allowing the car to meet the tarmac were specially made Michelin XGT plus tires 255-45-16 front, 315-40-16 rear mounted to a set of bespoke wheels, forged to the specifications provided by the original buyer when ordering their allocation. The two-seater supercar can be accurately described as an even more audacious version of the angular and geometric wedge-shaped Lamborghinis of the time. Although it shares characteristics with the aforementioned such as a low flat front and truncated tail the Vector W8 twin turbo is the furthest thing you can get from a kit car replica. In fact, the design of the W8 was actually inspired by the 1968 Alfa Romeo Carabo, which was one of the first prototypes to embrace what were then very futuristic design elements. Utilizing a body made primarily out of carbon fiber combined with the best aerodynamic principles available at the time, the W8 twin turbo produced relatively low drag even with its large rear wing. Due to the somewhat bespoke privileges given to each of the initial suitors, the W8 would undergo slight changes throughout its short production run. These included the elimination of some gills, a lower front fascia and air splitter, and adjustments of the rear wing, mirror intakes, and front grille. The glass roof, which was fitted to early examples, was eventually removed altogether. Wiegart's appreciation for fast-moving vehicles was indiscriminate, as he borrowed cockpit styling cues from fighter jets for the W8, mostly notably the sort of center driver's seating position with the shifter on the left and digital dashboard displays straight from the Top Gun movie set. The dashboard consisted of four screens which displayed a variety of information about the car. 
Although certain conveniences such as power steering and abs were foregone in the name of weight savings, the car was otherwise very civil for city driving thanks to a luxurious and overall comfortable interior. Premium leather and Swede lined most of the interior panels with the floors given wool carpeting and floor mats. The generously bolstered Recaro leather seats were electrically adjustable and air conditioning came standard. Operating a boutique supercar company obviously comes with many challenges. Without the backing, experience, and structure that a large automaker would have provided, many of Vector Aeromotive Corporation's well-intentioned promises could not be kept, and its price was one of these. The Vector W8 Twin Turbo was originally marketed as a $250,000 USD car, but in reality, would end up costing customers more than $450,000 USD by the time it was actually delivered. That's big money now, about $800,000 USD equivalency, and a huge amount of money in the early 90s dot being one of the most expensive vehicles one could or more accurately, couldn't purchase ultimately not many were sold. After running on fumes for a few years after opening its doors, the company eventually closed and with that, the W8 Twin Turbo ended its production run with just 19 examples made, two of which were prototypes. So with a now defunct company and a vision which had capitulated, many wouldn't be questioned in thinking that the story ends here. From a pragmatic point of view, the business was indeed a failure. However, the Vector W8 Twin Turbo has continued a life of its own thanks to the cult following it has garnered, in part due to the efforts of Hollywood or some other version of celebrity. My guess is that social media and the heightening levels of nostalgia in the air these days will only help the car get more attention. If you wanted to get your hands on a Vector W8 Twin Turbo today, first you would have to wait possibly indefinitely for one to come up for sale or auction. Then you would have to be ready to fork out at least $200,000 USD, and that's for one that demands a restoration project and up to $1 million USD, or more for a mint example. Not bad for a failed venture. 